Well, good morning and welcome back to my channel. This is Sticks Plus Twine. My name is Eric. I am coming to you from my home here in Toronto. And uh, this channel is about basically knitting. It is what it is. It's as advertised. It's about knitting. Uh, and every month I try and bring you something, um, a focus to our topic and our conversation. And this month's topic is travel. So I am by no means a travel expert. I am not a travel blogger, none of that, but I do travel quite a bit and I've had a lot of questions over a significant amount of time that were all about, hey, what about traveling with knitting needles? And you know what, there's a lot of information about traveling with knitting needles and your knitting in general out there. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, we're going to talk about um, some tips that I thought I, I'd like to share with you about my knitting. Uh, I've got a faux to share. I've got a hoe to share. Uh, I've got a work in progress that I thought you might be interested in seeing. Um, I've got some future plans. I've got a couple of favorite things. And of course, this would not be an episode of Sticks Plus Twine without one of I hear one of your favorite new parts, which is the realness. So we've got one there too. So let's get to it. So uh, first let's talk about um, where I can be found. I can be found on Ravelry as E.P. Lutz. I can also be found on Instagram as E.P.L.U.T.Z or Z, depending where you're from. Uh, I tend to be most active here on YouTube and on Instagram, um, but I will say that I do uh, appreciate all of your friend requests on Instagram. Uh, I typically don't interact much on Facebook because I tend to um, have a, a bit more of a personal knowledge of people that I friend on Facebook. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, people that I've met in real life, um, friends and family and that sort of stuff. And to be quite honest, that's where I actually share most of my uh, political beliefs and uh, if you're not interested in those and you're not um, then that's probably not the best place to connect that said um, please do um, follow me on Instagram if you like or friend me on Ravelry there you go uh, let's start first of all with uh, a little update on oh first I have to share this this is my new favorite mug of all time this is from David's Tees it's their Nordic mug and it is in the most perfect um, stockinette stitch I've ever seen. I immediately, as soon as I saw it, uh, I'm on their mailing list, and as soon as I saw it on their email, I ordered three because I had to send some and give some to a couple of friends. So, uh, stocking up Christmas ideas, right? Uh, let's start off with a bit of an update on how I'm doing with Simplify and with Knit Nosh. So, uh, Simplify, yes, I am really working hard on um, trimming down my wardrobe and um, things in the house, trying to sort of jettison things that we don't need, uh, making things a little bit nicer. I think next episode's gonna come a little bit um, just before Rhinebeck, so likely that episode will be more about uh, Rhinebeck planning and um, you know sort of my experiences there. This will be my third year going. Um, and then November, just sort of closed loop there will be about I think November is going to be about making things cozy right maybe it'll be the Huga episode who knows um, but all that said to say I'm sort of you know spring cleaning for me is never really a thing I don't like spring I like fall fall is my jam so fall cleaning for me is more the thing and getting things ready for the fall um, so my simplifying for the last month has really been focusing on how to get better at you know, just saying goodbye to things that don't serve me anymore or serve us anymore. Um, but that gives room for a lot more new things. So, unfortunately for poor Sebastian, uh, my partner, uh, most of that new stuff seems to be yarn. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, so I'm just, you know, it's coffee day today. It's very early. For me, anyway. Um, I think it's just gone 10. Uh, but we are living in Toronto. It is the weekend. It's the long weekend. Happy long weekend. Uh, Labor Day weekend for anyone, I guess, in North America and anywhere else. It might be a bank holiday somewhere else, but I know here in Canada it sure is. Um, and where I live on the lake is, seems to be right at the end of the runway for the air show that happens every Labor Day weekend as part of the Canadian National Exhibition. And let me tell you, they were doing some practicing yesterday and my windows were literally rattling. It was crazy loud, 
So I thought, well, I better get up early and record early today so I can edit today, get this out to you, so you've got something to watch for the long weekend. Um, so I'm up early. I stayed up a little bit too late last night because I've been binge watching a couple of new shows. Um, are you interested in hearing about what those are? Uh, you know what? Maybe I'll just put that at the end. But I've got a couple of new shows that I've been watching and really enjoying. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. Um, so let's get into what you're here for, which is the knitting, not the TV or the chit chat. So let me just open my iPad because it went to sleep on me. So first thing I want to talk about are some knit tips, um, which I don't know if they're really tips. I'm sure this is not new to anybody, but I thought I'd share anyway. Um, the first thing I wanted to share with you is my new way of organizing patterns. So I don't print out every single pattern. I tend to print out a pattern if it is a complicated, has multiple steps, or if I'm going to be traveling with it. And that's sort of where this comes into, because there's sort of a home and away aspect to this. The home part is a plain white binder I picked up at Staples. Um, it's back to school shopping season, so everything is darn cheap. Um, and I got a couple of these great little um, clear dividers, which actually comes with, um, I guess, like a paper that you can print out and uh, you can put labels in. I have not done that yet because I just picked this up. Um, but I have, they come in packs of like eight, five, ten, whatever. I packed a pack of eight. So I'll be dividing uh, in this binder things like hats, scarves, cowls, sweaters. Probably sweaters for men, sweaters for women is separate because I do gift um, knitting for some as well. I'm going to talk about that in sort of the future knit segment. Anyway, so I print out patterns that I know I'm going to use time and again in, you know, on the inkjet. And I put them in a folder just one of these clear page protectors. It will fit about 12 pages comfortably. I tend to print one, I don't do double-sided for a reason. I tend to make notes on the back side if I need to, that way I know I've already got them there. So if there's size differences or things that I've tried that are new or different, I tend to do that. But again, these are patterns that I'm going to return to. These are not patterns that are like used once and okay, well that was fun and get rid of it. Um, so that's sort of tip number one to keep them organized. The rest of the time I just use my iPad, like no big what. Uh, also if I need to refer to the pattern quite frequently, I tend to sort of, I'd rather have a printed version. Um, but what I wanted to show you is my organization system of projects. I'm just going to open the binder. I'm going to take out a pattern. So what I will do is I will print out the pattern. This is the Sock Monkey pattern by Jared Flood, which I will be making a talk, I think two episodes ago about that. Um, and what I have done is, the first thing I do is I put it on the cover. Second thing I do is if I've done a swatch, which in this case I have, I put it in the sleeve with it, and I attach one of these great little um, tags from, I think I picked these up at Michael's, and just a little, like, um, what do they call those, balloon pins. And on it, oh, make sure it's facing the right way for you. On it, I will indicate what pattern it is, what needle I used, what yarn I used, um, that sort of thing. So it all sits there in the in the packet. Because let's face it, sometimes you get a pattern and you're like, oh, I really want to swatch for that, but I don't really want to. Um, I don't want to make it yet. And my gauge doesn't change very often, to be honest. I'm a pretty consistent knitter, so I'm not too worried about doing a swatch and then leaving it for a couple of months. Like I'm usually pretty on no matter what I do. Um, but the other thing I do is, and this is where printing one-sided sort of comes in handy as well. I will print out the components to it so I know at a moment's glance when I'm ready to start the project, I can take it out of the binder. I've got all the information about what the yarn is that I need, sorry that's blowing out. I also make a little note about what I did for the swatch. How many stitches I cast on, how many rows I did, that sort of stuff. Um, that way I can sort of compare gauge really easily. Anyway, so that's what I do for these. I also have one that I've done for, pull this one out right next to it, the Albion sweater. And I talked a couple of uh, episodes ago about using leftover yarn to do your swatch. Sorry, it's falling, oh, falling, there we go. Crazy, right? Um, but I use leftover yarn for swatching because if it's the same base, from the same supplier, and it's generally from within the same time frame. You can be pretty sure. Don't quote me on this, and I'm sure master knitters will get will tut tut me about it. 
Um, but I just see no reason in wasting good project yarn that you maybe order, you know, when the project says you need 10 skeins to do something, and you order 10, and then you use a whole bunch for swatching, they don't always account for that, or how big your swatch is going to be. If you're going to do a 4x4 swatch, great. Sometimes some people do, you know, 8x8 swatches, or they'll do, you know, a longer swatch where they'll adjust for maybe, you know, the called for needle and then a needle size up and a needle size down on the same swatch so you can really gauge. Anyway, point being, use your, use your scrap yarn for that stuff. Don't use the good stuff. Like, use leftovers. That's my, that's my takeaway from this. Use leftovers and put them in your project bags. Keeps it all neat and tidy, nice and organized, and when you're ready to start your project, away you go. Just pull it out and away you go. So, that is my knit tip for this week. Whew! I am so jazzed up apparently today. I'm very excited today um, because I have a lot of cool stuff to share with you. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick break and we'll come back with the mm, faux show. Welcome back. It is about 30 seconds later, so I don't know why I really do that, but helps me organize the thoughts, but also makes it easier for you. If you haven't noticed, in the um, description box below, there's actually timestamps for each of these segments, and this sort of helps make it easier for me to tell you what that is. So if you want to skip over something, but why would you? But if you do, then you can just skip right over and skip to the timestamp. Anyway, time for a faux show. So I was fortunate enough to be accepted into the um, Brooklyn Tweed fall, early fall preview knitting program this year, which I was really quite honored to do. Um, you know, it's, you know, it, it's not a paid gig. It's not a sample knit. Um, they send you the pattern early and um, you get to sort of experience the making um, a little bit ahead of time. And for this particular pattern, I got to do this wonderfulness. This is the Spouts pattern by Nora Gone um, for Brooklyn Tweed Early Fall 2018. It was just released this past Wednesday, so I can now show the final finished object. Um, I do not have modeled shots of it yet because, frankly, I just got back from a trip, which I'm going to talk about, uh, and I haven't had a chance to block it yet. So, mm, it is what it is. Oh, there's a bird on my balcony. Hi, birdie. Sorry. I'm like squirrel today. I think I got a good night's sleep, but I'm up early. Anyway, there's the finished object. Now, you're kind of wondering, what the heck is that pattern? What is that texture? Well, I'm going to show you. Let me show you up close. It is uh, not going to focus because it sees my face. Let's see. Will it focus? Not really. Uh, maybe there. There we go. So, this is a three-dimensional sort of pattern where you've got all these little cups, which are, I guess, you know, the downspouts. It reminds me of um, rain chains on pagodas, sort of on the eaves, where you've got a chain and then there's like a little cup and then another chain and a little cup and it helps to sort of control water flow. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's what Nora was likely inspired by, but don't quote me on that. Um, anyway, this is done in Brooklyn Tweed Arbor in the Sashiko colorway which the color is pretty close on camera. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. Um, it took, I want to say four skeins, but it could have been five. Maybe it was five, I don't remember. Check the pattern. Um, there is, in the pattern, a version that is also done in Peary, which is their new um, worsted spun um, fingering weight yarn. And it actually, it's the same pattern. You just do it on different size needle, obviously, and you add an extra sort of repeat to it. It's really interesting. It reminds me a lot of what Olga Baraya Kefalian does, Kefalian does uh, in her sort of three-dimensional um, knitting. It's definitely a more artistic piece. It's not something that I think that you would necessarily wear day in and day out. Um, but once I block it, I will have better pictures because, yeah, been traveling. So it's not done yet from the blocking, but the finished object is now done. And it's quite, I won't say it's super long. It's about six feet long, maybe. I should probably have measured that, but um, you know what? What's a scarf? Length? Whatevs. As long as it's enough to wrap around. And let's see. Is it? Yep. It's enough. Anyway, it's warm in here, so I'm going to take this off right now. But that's the... Um, faux show for this week. So let's move right into the ho show. 
the ho show this week is oh wait i have one more faux show which i totally forgot about and uh, if you do follow me on instagram you will have seen these wonderfully modeled by my partner sebastian in a funny little boomerang these are his watermelon socks they are now done 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 um i have not blocked them apparently i'm off the chain when it comes to blocking this week i am not i'm not being a good blocker but um i don't know a lot of people are sort of now there's this debate do you block socks or not i don't think you block them so much but i haven't even washed these yet so um they probably could use a wash just to you know set the the pattern and set everything in anyway um this is gecko yarns in the watermelon sock set it comes as two little cakes already done up for you and i love them actually i kind of wish i bought two so i could have one a pair as well but they're really cute um some people thought they were italian flag inspired and yes they are the italian flag colors uh some people thought they were christmas inspired and yes they could be very well christmassy but when you look at the overall colors they are just absolutely watermelon and it's sort of last week into summer so it's perfect time to have them um <laughs> I'm being facetious. It's not the perfect time. You should have had these earlier, but I got them done. That's what's important. So phone number two. Put those over there. Now we can move to the ho show. And the first ho show. Well, this is really the only ho. I'm looking at the pile. Yeah, it's the only ho this week. So the ho is the coffee talk socks. The absolute most amazing pattern by Tracy Miller who is one half of the grocery girls you already know this um, and this was a gift pattern from Tracy for what these will now be my birthday socks my birthday is in 29 days and I'm getting old yo anyway um, birthday sock number one done this is Viola sock in four different colors uh, this one is Titus, this one is, let's go in the minis first, this one is Jaipur, this one is Pollen, and this is Eclipse 3 is the base. And it's a really cool, fun texture pattern. I, um, it's, it's actually really easy to memorize as well. Loved it. It went super, super fast because it's like, oh, I'll just do one more re repeat. The pattern only calls for um, a certain number of repeats. Uh, in the leg, I added five more repeats to it just because I don't necessarily want short socks, but I don't want super long ones either, but these, it fits perfectly. It's really cool. I love doing it. Um, they were a lot of fun. I will say the pattern is extremely well written. Um, and even to the point where the heel, doing the heel on magic loop when you're doing a flap and a gusset. For me, I've always found it a bit tricky because you've got so many stitches on one needle and like next to nothing on the other one in comparison. So it's a bit awkward and fiddly, um, which is why I tend to use only Fish Lips Kiss for my socks. But because I was doing the contrasting heel and I wanted to use Tracy's pattern exactly as it was written, I decided to go for it and I'm glad that I did. The uh, next sock I will be casting on this weekend, but I'm going to choose different placements for the um, complementary colors. I think I will likely do a uh, either a blue toe or a pink toe. I'm gonna do a green for the cuff for sure. Um, and then the heel will just be the alternating one. So I'll pick it when I get there. So anyway, that is a ho for show. No, that didn't make sense. Anyway, you know what I mean. So that is that one. The other thing we should talk about is works and projects projects works in projects the works in progress um i was not gonna lie i've got kind of tired of doing socks for a while and you'll see why because i cast on yes another pattern of socks um so i decided to alternate that with a bit of plain old yummy stockinette in the second half of my starting point shawl by hoi locatelli um, I've got through the sort of fun, interesting little bits down here. I am now just started last night the third um, color block of this great um, garter section. Um, I apparently have not updated where I put my progress keeper. I'm not a good progress keeper, apparently. Um, but it's fun. It's a great pattern. Makes me happy. 
It's a sunny little thing, and um, I really want to get this done so that I can take it with me to Rhinebeck. So, not for any other reason, but you know what? I want to have options, wardrobe options, right? Wardrobe options. Um, but I also have a lot of other projects I have to get to rather soon. So, got to get that one done. So that one is another work in progress. And because I know y'all like to know, it is living quite comfortably, this half anyway, in my absolute favorite bag, which is my By the Lakeside bag from Sandy. Yep, there she is, By the Lakeside. So there you go. Um, the next work in progress I will show you, which is the last one for this episode, I could not help myself because my birthday is coming and the first birthday sock went so quickly and I wanted another one and I love Tracy so much that I went and bought her Galliano sock pattern and cast that on too. Um, I cast this on on the plane or no before the before the flight home this week and got the ribbing done and then on the flight I did three repeats of the pattern. It's just a little, it's a little like baby whip right now. But you'll see, you'll like, wait, there's something different. Yeah, there is. Um, the pattern originally is written, and I have the pattern here so I can show you. The pattern originally is written has lace panels on the sides. And as a guy, I'm not a huge fan of lace panels in my socks. So. Uh, I was chit-chatting with Tracy on Instagram one day, and I said, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to do it, but I'm going to put in a seed stitch panel instead. And it was Tracy approved, so I now have seed stitch panels on either side. And it's not going to focus, but that's okay. Um, I would love to tell you what this yarn is. I really would. But I can't remember. <laughs> uh, it was a, a gift from Sandy. After my mom passed away, she sent me a little care package, which was super, super lovely. And it included this yarn and some needles and a bunch of other like little goody things. And I cannot find the ball band. Um, I caked this up before. I just left on the flight earlier this week. And, um, oh, there's some, some other stuff in there. Um, but I can't find the ball band. I have no idea what this is. It feels like an opal, but I don't remember it being an opal. So, here's my challenge, knitters. What the heck is this? Anyone know? It feels like a regia slash opal something. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I love it. I just don't know what it is. If you know what this is, please let me know in the comment section below. So that is it for works in progress at the moment. Uh, I'm still working on my Redford pullover. Uh, I'm about, I want to say 75% done the front. The two side panels are done, the back is done, I'm almost on the front, one sleeve is done, so I really don't have that much left to do, um, and I've got a lot of time still. I've got about, what, are we out six weeks from Ryan back? So I've got plenty of time to finish it, won't be a problem. Um, that's it for works in progress at the moment. So let's take another quick little break, grab your knitting, and let's talk about some travel stuff. So let's have our little coffee talk about traveling. Uh, travel is good for the soul. We all know this. Uh, opens your perspectives and your horizons to new things and new people and new places. Um, you know, opens hearts and minds, all that fun stuff. But for traveling with knitting, it can sometimes be a bit tricky. Um, there's a lot of questions about, are knitting needles permitted on flights? You know, all that sort of stuff. So I did a little bit of research, not a huge amount, but a little bit. And um, you'll find links to some information below. But um, I will say for my North American um, viewers, both the Canadian um, CATSA and the USTSA say on their websites that yes, knitting needles are permitted on flights. However, the ultimate decision as to whether or not they will be allowed on a flight is up to the individual um, TSA officer or CATA, CATSA officer. Um, so I've got sort of a couple of like do's and don'ts. So let's go through them. Do, do, number one is be nice. Don't be a jerk. Um, if they question or want to examine, let them do it. Help them. Uh, number two is be prepared. Be prepared for 
just in case they decide that they're not going to let them on. Now, by being prepared, let's just clear that up. If you are taking DPNs, you're probably okay. If you are taking circular needles, you're probably going to be okay. If you are taking super long 12 inch uh, needles, you may not be okay. Um, you know, it's their job to protect all, all the passengers. And if they think that you could potentially represent a threat or someone that could take it out of your hands could represent a threat, it's not always about you, it's about the other people as well, they may not let you through. So what are you going to do? Well, always be prepared. You should always have some kind of, you know, lifeline crochet cotton in your knitting bag anyway for such things. Uh, but if they decide that they're going to take your needles, at least have a, like a little sewing needle and something that you can put it on a on waist yarn to hold it. Um, apparently, needles are knitting like sewing needles are permitted because they're short and they don't really represent a huge threat. Um, and that's also indicated on both of these websites. Um, the last one is um, just be smart. You know, if you're going to take your signature set, you know, that cost you, you know, 50 bucks for a set of DPNs, uh, maybe not the smartest idea, just in case, um, take a set that you'd be happy to lose because you never know. And it's not always the best security. What happens if you, like me, forget a bag full of stuff on a train somewhere? It happens, right? Would you cry over it if you lost it? Then probably not best to take it with you. So uh, recapping the do's, be nice be prepared, and be smart. A couple of don'ts here. Don't be a brat. There's no point in arguing with TSA folks. You can call up their website and show them, but at the end of the day, it says really clearly it's up to them. There's there's no arguing with that. There's no appeal, you know, but most of the time, as long as you're, you know, as you follow <laughs> rules one, two, and three of the do's, you'll probably be okay. Um, would said, oh yeah, that's right. Don't bring the don't bring the good stuff. Um, you know, don't bring the expensive stuff. That's kind of a silly thing to do because um, you just never know. And the last one is really don't worry. You know, it's only knitting. Yes, it's something to do, and it's something that um, you know helps pass the time. And you know, we all love it. But at the end of the day, it's not going to, you know. It's not, you know, creating world peace here. We're creating knitted things. So if something happens, don't worry. Just chalk it up to, oh well, and move on. Because you know what? Causing a scene in an airport is only good for other people to video you and create memes, which I have to admit, I kind of love. So if you do it, at least let me know. Um, so, like I said, I will put some links down below to uh, what I found. I will say that Europe and Asia are a lot trickier because they have a lot more independent um, notions. Like, I believe, for instance, I found that Greece, for instance, will not let you put officially, you know, your mileage may vary, um, will not let you officially bring knitting needles on board. If you are traveling by car, have at it. If you're traveling by train, usually not, you know, not an issue, but we're talking mainly about air travel here. So those links are down below for you to take a look at. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about what my plans are, where I've been, what I've been doing. So I just got back from a quick trip to Copenhagen where uh, I got to um, see a friend of mine, uh, Mikael, who uh, super lovely, unfortunately his wife, um, Tina, wasn't able to join us, but it was really great um, to hang out with him. Uh, we went to La Glace and had a nice cake. We had, yes, we had dessert before dinner. Then we went out for dinner to a galette restaurant. Um, we knit, we had fun. And um, he gave me a wonderful skein of yarn, which I will show in uh, future projects. Um, and uh, yeah, it was an awesome time. I got to knit quite a bit on the way back. I didn't knit so much on the way there because it was a night flight and uh, had a couple of drinks and, you know, drinking and knitting not always the best thing to do on a flight so uh, I was a little bit uh, cautious about that let's say uh, so Copenhagen was great I stopped in at Sommerfuhlen and bought a couple of skeins of yarn which I'm really looking forward to getting into as well and uh, yeah I bought a couple of things at Flying Tiger which is a great little I don't even know how to describe it it's kind of like 
the dollar store with a meets Target. Like it's got all kinds of really cool stuff in it. That's not very expensive. It's a lot of fun. It's all over Europe. So uh, if uh, if you've never been, you definitely have to find one if you are traveling. Um, what else? So uh, I'll be traveling at the end of the month to Disney for my birthday, um, which will be fun. I love the Polynesian Village Resort, which we will be staying at. So that'll be October. Um, I'm back for like a week and a half from that trip, and it's Rhinebeck. So I will be at Rhinebeck this year, and of course we'll be doing the Rhinebeck Podcaster Meetup, and we're staying in a house with a bunch of really cool people. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, I will be going to uh, Thanksgiving in Atlanta to visit some friends. So I'll be flying to that one. I'm driving to Rhinebeck, by the way, but I'm flying to Atlanta for Thanksgiving. By which I mean American Thanksgiving, not Canadian. Th Canadian Thanksgiving, I'll be home, I think. Um, and then uh, the last really travelish thing after that is uh, we'll be going to... Florida for New Year, and then I'll be doing Vogue Knitting in New York, which I'm really excited about. I didn't go last year, uh, but I'll be going this year. And last year I missed out on registration, and there were like there were a bunch of class, a lot of class I would have loved to have taken, but I missed out on it, so didn't go. But this year I plan on registering, so that'll be fun. So that's me for upcoming travel stuff, um, but. You know what? Let's talk about some future knitting and what might I be making on some of these trips. So it's time to talk about a little bit of future knit planning. This is all actually kind of one of my favorite parts because uh, like many of you, I love surfing Ravelry and finding new patterns and I look forward to all the new fall pattern releases. Um, and I found one that actually was an older pattern, but it was a free one on the Rowan website that I really liked. Um, Sebastian had seen a pattern or sweater in a shop, I think it was a Ralph Lauren store, uh, I want to say two, three years ago, that this pattern really reminded me of, and I'll put a picture of it over here. It's called the Sasha Pullover by Rowan, um, and it's made in Rowan Big Wool, which, you know, for the amount needed, because it's, it's like a super bulky, um, it was going to be almost like $300 Canadian to make. So in looking for yarn substitutions, I sort of figured the closest, and I'll have to swatch for this just to make sure the gauge works, but the closest one that I could find, sorry, crinkles, um, is actually from Knit Picks, is their Mighty Stitch Super Bulky, which is this great guy here, and this one. So, oh my God, look at those colors. Um, the way that I'm gonna do this Normally, if I was doing the snowflake, which would be on the pattern, I would choose white. The sweater that he really liked had a really big Swiss cross right in the, the chest. And um, so I'm gonna do the cross in the red and the rest of the sweater in the blue. And it was actually, this one was not on sale, but you know, Knit Picks stuff is not very expensive. Um, I've never used this yarn. The reviews of it said it does kind of shed quite a bit. But I'm okay with that because it is 80% uh, acrylic, 20% superwash wool, and I'm okay with it because that means he can wash and wear, and it can go in the dryer. So I'm not worried about it if it sheds because the dryer will catch it all, not me. So that'll be fun. That's one of my future knits. 
Um, I have... Also, I wanted to sort of show you what I picked up. I just want to fix this game because it looks a bit manky from travel. Uh, I picked up this really cool uh, Isayer Jensen Yarns. Um, it is 100% pure new wool uh, from Denmark. Uh, it is 100 grams for 250 meters. So I believe this would make it technically a DK weight. And it feels very uh, rustic. And I think it's going to make a really, really cool hat. Um, I've got a couple of ideas for it. I haven't fully decided yet. Uh, I have quite a few DK weight yarn patterns for hats already. But you never know. I might make one up. So that's a really cool one. Really, really like this. It feels really neat. It smells good. Something is causing me to have sort of a allergy reaction at the moment. <laughs> I think it's... There's something in this room that I'm not liking. So otherwise I would smell it, but I can't smell it at the moment. So there's that. Uh, cool stuff. This comes in a bunch of different colors. Uh, Pick this up at Sommerfuhlen in Denmark, in Copenhagen as well. But also while I was there and visiting with my friend Mikkel, he and his wonderful wife Tina gave me, and you know what, I'm not apologizing for the crinkling because that's just the way that goes. They gave me this wonderful skein of yarn which is done by a hand dyer in Denmark, and I did not mess this up. There we go. I just want the label to be nice. Uh, this is Solvang by Sarah, hand dyed in Denmark, and it is a... there's yellow, there's cream, there's gray, there's speckles. I kind of love all of it. I love this section here in particular. It's beautiful. It is, it's a fingering weight. So I have a feeling that this needs to be, um, it's 100% merino, so it is not a um, nylon blend. So I will not use this for socks because I don't want them to wear out. But I think what I might do is, I've been, I've made quite a few sock head hats, which I really, really like. However, um, my wonderful friend Ramona turned me on to the Midas hat, which she actually likes better um, in that it's got, instead of having a brim that sort of is done in a certain way, um, it's actually a different way of approaching it, and I kind of like that too. I haven't tried the pattern yet, but I'll put a picture here for you. Um, but I'm definitely going to, I think, make a Midas because that would be perfect. And I can't thank these guys enough. Thank you so much, Michael and Tina. That's just, I loved it. I love the colors. I'm gonna say, it's actually the first time I've held it, and I really like it. I love it. I love all the little tiny little speckles of color. It reads as gray, but those great little pops of color in there are just awesome. So that is Solvang by Sarah. And if I'm pronouncing that badly, I'm sorry, but that's what it looks like to me. So that's what I'm going to go with. And that's it for acquisitions uh, for future knit projects. Uh, I do have some other stuff that is on order that has not arrived yet. Um, so I'll talk about those in a future episode. But let's just suffice it to say, future knitting is getting all planned out. I've actually been spending a lot of time in my queue and Ravelry starting to figure out what I want to make, what when I'm going to make it. Uh, as soon as the Redford is done, I will be making um, my Albion, will be my next um, sweater that I make for myself, and we've talked about that before. I think that was two episodes ago. So if you're interested, just pop back um, two episodes, and you'll see what that one looks like. So that is it for um, future knitting. I'm going to talk next about a couple of favorite things. Okay, so we're in the home stretch, guys. I'm um, going to talk about some favorite things first. First one I wanted to talk about is the Coco Knits... Um, is it going to focus? No, it's not going to focus. I'll do this sort of, you know, the crazy podcaster trick. No, it doesn't work. Uh, probably because it's translucent. Um, the row counter from Coco Knits is, I think it's really cool. It's a smaller shape. I also have um, like a clover one that I inherited from my mom. Um, but I love this one because it has a lock on it. So when you're traveling, ah, oh, guess what? It won't mess up. Um, this is actually, I'm not going to show you how it goes ka-chunk, ka because you can figure that out. Uh, and it's also 
I'm using it on my Redford right now and I don't want to lose my place. Um, but it's perfect for travel. It's small, it's light. It also has a metallic back, so if you have the Knit Keeper bracelet from Coco Knits, it will just stick right to it. Um, I haven't got the bracelet. I'm not sure really why, but it's not something I think I would wear. Um, but I am a huge fan of this. I saw Sandy's, and I was like, ooh, I kind of have to have one of those. So I ordered it from the Spastrico in Montreal, and it was it arrived in like... I think the next day. It was super fast shipping. I don't know how they did it because Canada Post is terrible at shipping. They are really, really bad. But uh, they got it here super quick. And it comes in like, it's got a cute little drawstring keeper bag for it. Like, it's really cute. Anyway, that's one of my favorite things. The other one is something new that if you haven't seen before, I have a thing for fringe field bags. Uh, I have an orange one, which you can see right behind me. I have a yellow one, and I have a gray one. And now I have the natural one, but this is the waxed canvas version. So you're not necessarily going to know that from pictures, but it's... you can't really see, but it is translucent. Um, Oh, there, maybe you can see that. There, I have a Brooklyn Tweed notebook in there. But it is really cool. Um, it's perfect for travel. Because it's waxed, if you put it on something and it gets sticky, you can just wipe it off. Uh, if it gets a little bit dirty um, from being in your travel bag or any of that, you just, again, wipe it off and it just sort of wipes clean. Uh, it's a little stiff when you get it. It's got a different feel than other bags, which are slightly stiff as well. But this is stiff in a different way. It's kind of stiff and it stays. You know, when it folds somewhere, it just stays there. Uh, I did field test this on my trip to Copenhagen, and it's perfect for flying. Um, because it's got that sort of extra little something to it folding down the brim, it creates its own great yarn bowl as well. And when you are basically managing, like I did for the um, Coffee Talk socks, a whole bunch of different colors. It's really easy to have them still in the bag. I don't have to take them out. They're going to roll around. I'm not going to lose them, especially on a flight. The last thing you want is to have it go under a seat and roll under someone else's um, seat. That's just embarrassing. Um, but it's perfect. Uh, it's great for travel. Um, and the last thing I want to show you, and this is by no means a new thing, um, but it is new to me. I ordered myself a sock ruler. As I get to doing more socks for um, Sebastian, I find it really hard to figure out where his foot is. So I wanted something to measure it. Um, but also, this thing, because I, I do cuff down, um, the foot part is always the challenging one. Turns out, this is exactly the length of my foot and his foot. So I know when I'm at, you know, well, I'll go with inches. If I'm at eight to eight and a quarter inches on here, it's time to start the toe. Um, you know, to eight and a half, absolutely have to. But now I have a way of gauging it. And again, for travel, this fits right in the fringe bag. And I don't have to worry about pulling out a tape measure or guessing. Um, for me, typically, the length of my hand is the right amount before I start the toe decreases. But this way, I sort of have a consistent approach to it. I don't count rows. I know people that do. Uh, who can be bothered, especially on a vanilla sock where you're just like whipping round and round? Like, who can be bothered with counting rows? Especially if you're, if you're doing a pattern, sure, you're, you've got sort of an inbuilt way of counting. But if you're just doing vanilla sock, way better. Also, thank you, thank you to um, the sock ruler people, which I did not buy this from them because shipping and getting it from there was ridiculous. So I bought it from an Etsy shop here in Canada. Um, and it arrived in like two days again. So Canada Post all of a sudden is on their game apparently. Um, it has centimeters, so I don't have to operate just in inches, which is kind of cool. Well, it makes no difference because I'm using it as an absolute, not as a relative, but um, yay, centimeters, centimeters. So that's another one of my favorite things. Uh, what other favorite things I want to share with you? Uh, two things, some shows that I've been watching, which have been a lot of fun while knitting. Uh, I watched on Netflix the first season of The Alienist, which is based on a book, um, and I'll put a little picture here. Uh, 
I will say the cast is really good. Uh, Daniel Bruhl plays the lead character. Luke Evans is in it. And Dakota Fanning is also one of the characters. It's really cool. It's a period piece set, I think, in 1896 about um, the alienist. Uh, is sort of like a for it's the precursor to a psychologist slash profiler of criminals. And um, if you are a mother with young children, you may not want to watch this because the story centers around um, something that happens to young boys, young men. And it's not something that I think is for the delicate hearted amongst us. But if you are able to separate yourself from sort of a fictional account, then it's really cool. Um, surprisingly, something I didn't know, fun fact, uh, Teddy Roosevelt actually is in it uh, as the um, police commissioner of New York City. Who knew? I didn't know that that's what he did. I don't, I'm not American, so why would I? But uh, I thought it was just really cool. So anyway, binged that. Uh, I've also binged through the first season of Luke Cage, binged through de the Defenders, uh, and just finishing up Jessica Jones season two, and then I'll be doing Luke Cage season two, and then Iron Fist season two, which Iron Fist season one was really... <clears throat> but I had to watch it in order to watch The Defenders. So, because I wanted to know the, all the backstory, but season two of Iron Fist looks actually pretty awesome. So, uh, I'm sort of on the whole Marvel Netflix train. Uh, and then just yesterday, I'm also a big fan of spy thrillers. The new Jack Ryan series on Amazon Prime launched yesterday, and there's, I think, eight episodes. I think I finished four or five yesterday. Um, Sebastian tried watching it, wasn't too keen on it, but I really enjoyed it, so I watched that last night. So there you go. You've got a couple of new shows to watch. Um, you've got some new tools and tricks. Uh, let's come back and talk about some realness. So welcome to the realness. Um, from a lot of your feedback and comments, this is, I'm hearing, one of your favorite parts. Um, and it's not about being, you know, mean or a jerk. It's about, you know, a dose of realness. Uh, and this week's realness is really more directed towards a frustration that I have um, with Ravelry and um, some designers. I'm not going to name names um, because I don't think that's really appropriate and I'm not meant to, I don't want to call anybody out on this. Future planning for um, knitting projects, first place I think we all turn to is Ravelry. Uh, there's some like some good standbys like you know Brooklyn Tweed's gonna have a couple of collections that are come out every year you know once a quarter or so which is always good and you sort of anticipate that Woolfolk has a new collection coming out the fiber company just had another collection out and on and on and on um, but typically when you're like oh I'm just sort of like browsing perusing future planning Ravelry's where I go to and I always love to go to the hot right now section because that's sort of where you see what's you know the in thing um, as a male knitter it holds a little bit less relevance because it tends to be a lot of shawls or the sweater of the moment everybody's making the Tecumseh sweater last year before Rhinebeck was the Sunset Highway now everyone's doing you know the Tenya pullover and stuff which is great um, but as a guy knitter I like to just go in and I will filter it and will say give me gender either unisex or male so here comes the sort of ranty portion of this. Designers, uh, when you're entering a pattern into Ravelry, for those who don't know, um, you apply all these different attributes. So if it's, you know, a yoked sweater, it's a cardigan, it's um, steaked, uh, it's top down, it's, you know, toe up, whatever that might be. And one of those attributes is gender. One of the things that pisses me off more than anything is when you see a women's sweater marked as male which if it is a sort of relatively gender neutral sweater that could be you know given either you know with instructions for removing the waist shaping if it exists or has sufficient sizes for male sizing which is part of the craft yarn council's standards on how you do that I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Even if there's no projects that specifically say or show, oh, here's what a guy looks like in that. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. Uh, 
But there are, and I don't want to name names, but there are a number of well-known, very experienced designers who have very feminine patterns with male attributes. Not cool people. Totally not cool. It's a little thing, sure. Uh, but it's inappropriate, I think. And there's nothing you can really do to fix it as a guy knitter, other than to, you know, what, do I need to start policing these people and say, hey, it's kind of not my job to, um, but rather than sort of a suffer in silence or B, keep my mouth shut, because, you know, it wouldn't be Eric if I kept my mouth shut. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you as a designer would actually just take a second to think, hey, a Tanya sweater, and I'm only using this as an example because it's super popular and it does not include a male attribute. This is why I'm using this as the example. So, you know, keep your hate to yourself. Uh, the Tanya sweater is clearly not a men's pattern, so it should not be marked as male. Plain and simple. Clear as mud? I think so. Um, shawls? Different kind of story, I think. You know, depending on the you know, shape or the yarn choice. Yeah, it could totally be male. There's there's no question. Um, you know, it's not like it will necessarily be worn the same way. And if it, if it does, it doesn't really matter. Gender is not what this conversation is about. This is about helping your patterns rise to the needs of the knitter and the knitter being able to discover your pattern. So that's my realness on that. Uh, your comments are always uh, welcomed. I do try and respond to as many as I can. Sometimes when I'm, you know, busy or if I can't get to it um, right away, I will try and respond to you. Um, but I really love hearing from all of you. It really does make my day when I hear that, like, oh, good, somebody really likes and appreciates what I'm doing. So that's it for this episode. Um, next episode will be coming just before Rhinebeck, I believe. Maybe a bit before, depending on if I get some cool stuff. Uh, one question I want to leave you with is, you know, these are, you know, the monthly episodes are the longer ones where there's a lot of stuff to cover. Um, I'm just curious, would you be interested in seeing sort of shorter stuff? Um, you know, as I get you know, projects in or, you know, yarn delivery, stuff that I may be excited about that I'm sharing on Instagram. If this is a secondary platform for sharing that, if that would be something you'd be interested in seeing, that would be great to hear. Anyway, um, that's it. And I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.